In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grout your floor plates or equipment stands. Really pro level here, folks. But first, we gotta go back to the beginning. It started last weekend in the morning. I came into the shop. I was reminded by the project that we had the week before. As you might remember, we had an uneven floor and I had to use a lot of shims. You know, those shimming lessons as a child came in handy, but you know, I knew there had to be a better way. But after all that stress from last week's project, I did what anybody would do. I opened a cold one. Mmm, NOS Zero. All the caffeine and none of the calories. Before we could grout these floor plates, we had to build the stand. So I gathered up some material off the rack that was in the last video. Check that out. But just some flat bar, tube, 3x3, three three, and some I-beam. Cut it all out on the bandsaw, which really renders this machine that we're putting on a stand obsolete. This is a manual iron worker that we're putting on here. But I got it, so we're going to set it up anyways. Cutting these floor plates out at the house, there's no water jet here. No mill either. So I tried to save some time by using an oxyacetylene torch instead of drilling them by hand. Pretty rough holes, but uh, you know, it is a little bit quicker. I always got to remember how to use the dang thing every time I set it up though. But I did start to smell some rubber midway through and all I could think of is, I hope that that's not my tennis shoes. I couldn't think of anything worse. But after I was done, I saw that it was just the acetylene and oxygen hoses. Well, I guess I'll have to get that fixed before I use that thing again. I got the metal cleaned up with a paint slash rust stripping pad for the grinder that you can get at Menards. Because it's going to paint this as usual. And um, pretty simple build here. Uh, just all fillet welds all the way around uh, with the MIG welder. Uh, quarter inch plates for the floor plates. I did see a YouTube video. It actually had a lot of views as an engineering channel and it kind of talked about floor plates, the engineering of floor plates. And uh, we're using grout here. That's why you came to this video. But um, you could actually even, if the floor plates are thick enough, then you don't need grout or anything underneath them and that's another option um, we're just using quarter inch here so that's not really thick enough i don't think but i'm not an engineer we are laying this out here on the floor um, just before we drill our holes we're using wedge anchors here i'm going to go ahead and paint it now so it has time to dry before we put it on the studs i'm drilling holes now to insert the studs I got 7 inch studs, but I wasn't sure if those were long enough. I know what you're thinking. Jaden, 7 inches is definitely long enough. And I would agree with you. That should be long enough. But we got a heck of a gap here to fill. And once we bottom out those studs, we still have to have room for the nuts. So at this point, we put the wedge anchors in. We bottomed it out, and we have a nut on the concrete, which tightens it up. We leave that nut on there, and then we put another nut underneath the floor plates, and we level those, and put this on here, and get it leveled both ways. As you can see, the concrete is very unlevel. We have a little bit of grout here, and a lot thicker over there. So once it's all leveled, then we can put the top nuts on, and then we're ready to put the grout in. What I did was made a simple little box to go around the floor plates. The point of making a box around the plate is number one, so you can pour the grout underneath it, but number two, it'll let it air come up uh, on all, you know, on the sides. And so the grout will fill up evenly and, and push all the way up to the floor plate. I put blue tape on the concrete. I didn't read that anywhere or anything, but I tried to put it close to the edge of the floor plate. I thought that that would make it easier after the grout dried a little bit to get it pulled up uh, without sticking to the concrete too much. And it did seem to help. The bag of grout does have an amount of water that you're supposed to use 
on the bag and I used close to the maximum. Uh, I probably could have used just a little bit less. Uh, you know, I guess that concrete, you know, it goes from dry to real wet real quick. The bag also did say to mix the entire bag <clears throat> and I assume that that's because it has some additives to make it non-shrink and to ensure that it has all the right components you need to put the whole bag, mix the whole bag uh, so that you know it's gonna still have the same properties. And then the last step is to, after it dries a bit, cut it with a margin trowel on the edges and pull up the old grout. Now, it was a little bit wet. It should have dried faster according to what I read, but um, so it was a still a little probably too wet for when I did this but as you can see here it did dry uh, completely it didn't sag I just kind of smoothed out the edges after I cut it I think it got a real nice clean look be sure to share the video and we'll see you on the next one for a video suggested just for you click the thumbnail on the left for the latest video click the thumbnail on the right and to visit the channel click the icon in the center